Hey dolls, before I get to part two of Colossal Misunderstandings, which is what I will be working on next after this video, smaller videos notwithstanding, I want to take a look at Ika with the obligatory spoiler warning. It's a simple story of a boy, a girl, and a dark queen seemingly jealous of her daughter's youth. While working on my 20th anniversary video for Eco, I was looking at Glitterberry's website some more, and there is a page that reveals why the story is so simple. It's because only 30% of it made its way into the final version. As mentioned in my previous videos, Ueda employs the design via subtraction philosophy to his games, and he also did that with this story, which he has admitted to regretting. Within the game files are title cards for alternate dialogue lines and deleted cinematics. If you want to take a look at the cards yourself, I've included a link to Glitterberry's page in the description for you. Now, I am of the mindset that whatever is removed from the final version of a movie, book, or game should not be considered canonical unless elements of those lost ideas still exist in the final version. It's nothing more than part of the creative process that is rather interesting in terms of what was once being considered, but nothing more than that. For instance, according to some of the cards, it seems at some point Iko and Yorda were able to understand each other. In the case of Iko's lost content, I have some good news and bad news. Let's start with the bad news. We lost Yorda's character development and some more scenes with the Queen. Yorda in the final game is a very passive character, but they did write some scenes of her openly rebelling against her mother, like she cries out, you're not my mother, in one of the unused cards. Now, this is meant to be just a rebellious outburst, as we see in later unused title cards, Yorda does refer to the queen as mother, and there's also this blink and you'll miss it moment of when the queen disappears, showing that they do share a family resemblance. I do think Yorda having a rebellious streak is an element of her character as we first meet her being held in a cage. It seems Yorda was causing problems for her mother that the queen ensured her daughter wouldn't break free and ruin the ritual she was preparing. Also, if you've ever read the non-canon but interesting eco-novel written by Miyuki Miyabe, it goes more in-depth than Yorda's character and past. And now for the good news. The lost title cards wind up shining a light on the game's narrative. Before we get to that, Glitterberry points out what is often a consequence to rushing the localization of a game. Translation errors. Eco isn't as bad as it could be, but tragically the only instance of a mistranslation in the dialogue happens to be a line of great significance. When we first meet the queen and she tells us who the girl is, the English text reads, that girl you're with is my one and only beloved daughter. Stop wasting your time with her. However, a more accurate translation of the Japanese script would be, That girl you're with is my one and only beloved daughter who will inherit this castle one day. At the end of the game, we learn that the queen intends to use a ritual that would have Yorda become her new vessel. For any of you who have played the Dragon Age series, there is a character known as Flemeth, who is the adoptive mother of Morgan and a powerful sorceress. In Dragon Age Origins, if you build your relationship with Morgan properly, you will unlock a quest where we learn that Flemeth would take in girls of strong magical affinity to raise and then later use them as her spirit vessel as a means of extending her life. Now, there's more to Flemeth's story than that, but I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about Dragon Age and only wanted to point out that the two games feature a similar magic ritual in their narratives. However, this line of Yorda inheriting the castle in the mist adds some nuance to the queen's intentions for her daughter. There may be something more to it than just the queen wanting to be young again or have eternal life. And unfortunately, this is lost to English speaking players. Glitterberry also provides a retranslation of some of the dialogue between the Queen and Eco prior to the final battle. The official translations of this scene isn't misrepresenting the original script, unlike the previous example, but slight word choices by a translator can make all the difference. Here's how Glitterberry chose to translate this scene. What do you want with Yorda? Give up your foolish ambitions. You are already too late. This body of mine will not last much longer. I shall bind my will to Yorda and use her to reincarnate as master of this castle. That is the girl's destiny, 
She is the vessel for my soul. The next time she wakes, she will remember nothing of you or your time together. There are also some unused title cards for the queen in this scene I want to point out. This is none of your affair. No matter how hard you struggle, she will never return to normal. The official translation makes it sound as if the queen is using Yorda for vain purposes, but with this retranslation, as well as pointing out that in the original Japanese script she mentions Yorda as her heir, I wonder if the queen is doing this out of necessity for their lineage. But let's just put a pin in that thought for now. Now, the majority of the unused title cards elaborate more on the sacrifice of the horned children. When the queen makes her introduction, she tells Iko that Yorda is part of a different world than his. Here are some unused lines of the queen revealing more on what she means. To give your life in service to nobility such as we, such is your lot. That is why you were brought to this castle, is it not? There was a later scene planned, but removed, of the queen and Yorda arguing that provides further insight. Yorda, please try to understand. I do not wish to hurt you. You have always been at the forefront of my thoughts, and yet, you say you intend to leave me and run off to who knows where. You cannot live outside these walls. I know that. Then why aren't you here by my side? I'm not coming back. You've got it all wrong, mother. I'm going to live the way I want to, even if I have to pay for it with my life. It's far better than surviving on the sacrifices of innocent people. You can visit Glitterberry's website to read the rest of the deleted scene, but this is the dialogue that is the most interesting and revealing. I know it's not new information here, as we can tell by the ending sequences that the horned sacrifices are a key part for the Queen's ritual, but the biggest shame that all this lost content reveals is that there is so much more than an envious and overzealous villain. There's more to Yorda as well. Yorda isn't just trying to escape the Queen's evil plan, but live a life of freedom of her own choosing, and where no one else has to suffer, despite knowing that she can't survive beyond the castle. The Queen repeatedly, in both the used and unused title cards, tells Iko to leave, but fights him when he makes it clear that he will not listen. We were left here to serve the same fate as the other horned children, but by a stroke of pure luck, we're able to avoid that. I've seen the number of sacrifices people say there are in the game is 39, where Iko would have been the 40th, but I counted 54 total coffins. I could just be bad at math, I don't know. But it seems the queen has enough for her purposes, or perhaps her life truly is near its end, and she cannot hold off the ritual much longer. The world in Ueda's games are never fully explained to us, as he likes players to use their imaginations to fill it in. Remember, Ico was created prior to Shadow of the Colossus even being thought of, so I want to look at the game divorced from that connection. Yorda, the Queen, and the Castle in the Mist are the game's biggest mysteries. Despite being born with horns, Ico is suggested to be no different than any other human, but the same doesn't seem to be said of the castle's inhabitants. The first instance of seeing Yorda is through a vision where she appears from and is covered in shadow. Upon meeting her in the real world, Yorda has this ethereal glow to her and an aura that is capable of opening certain obstacles. From what we can see under her own shadowy aura, the queen also has this inhuman pallor. There isn't anyone else in the game quite like them. The enemies are shadows of various humanoid shapes for the most part. Some are more beastly and large, others have a multitude of appendages and wings, and there are small arachnid-like ones as well. The castle itself is a grand structure, but the halls are empty, save for the few enemy NPCs we encounter. While we could consider the enemies as a sort of guard, and at one point early in development they were guards, there are no other servants. The only ones that reside in the castle is the Queen and Yorda. The structure is falling in disrepair. It does seem as though construction was happening, but it's been halted or interrupted. Interestingly, while the time period of Eco seems to take place in days of old, there is a lot of modern equipment littered around the castle. Water mills and windmills can be found, and the castle gates are solar-powered, but magic is also another source of energy. 
Yorda naturally emanates this magic that can open pillared doors. The men who brought Iko to the castle, and then later Iko himself, are able to obtain a sword that carries the same magical energy Yorda and the Queen bear. There are few things within the Castle in the Mist to let us in on the world it inhabits and the nature of what it is or once was. The runic language that Yorda speaks is one that Iko doesn't know, but her mother is capable of speaking both their tongues. Most doors are blocked by columns that are covered in runes, but carved inside them is a sitting horned child resting their head on their knees. The coffin that Iko is placed in alongside the previous sacrifices glows as if it was awaiting his arrival, and it contains a pillory to shackle his wrists to prevent the sacrifice breaking free. On the outside, we see what looks like two people kneeling in prayer with what may be another person lying on the ground in between them. There is also a rune carved at the head of the coffin that does translate as the letter Y in English or Yo in Japanese. Shortly after freeing Yorda, we come across a bridge that leads to another building of the castle. At the mouth of the bridge, we see it was once adorned with two statues, but now only one remains of a horned man. In the throne room, however, there are two pillars made of the same material of the obstructive columns we frequently saw throughout the castle, yet they are not carved the same. Their appearance is more crude, but also seem to resemble another horned figure. People bearing horns were something that was always significant to the castle's history, and perhaps the reason it was constructed. Let's return to the rulers of the castle in the mist. We come across several graves as we try to make our way to the outside world. As we move through the castle, it truly feels as though the thriving days and years of the place are long in the past. The Queen and Yorda may truly be the last of their dynasty, perhaps of their kind. All we can do is interpret what is presented to us as nothing is ever defined. To me, it seems that the Queen is desperate to continue her line as her final moments draw near, and perhaps she was in Yorda's place in a previous ritual powered by other horn sacrifices. But Yorda is aware that a life extended through sacrifices is no longer viable, and yearns to leave the walls of the castle. The Queen says this is impossible for the young girl, and it appears as if she's correct. The moment we've reached the halfway point of the bridge, the magic of the castle's gate pulls Yorda back. After fighting the spirits of the horned children and discovering Yorda has been turned to stone, Iko makes his way to the queen's throne room. She tells us we are too late, as the ritual to transfer her soul to Yorda's body has already begun, and that when Yorda wakes up, she will no longer have her memories. Upon the queen's defeat, she states that Yorda will never be able to leave the castle, even with her death. This suggests that Yorda being unable to leave is not something that is enforced by the queen. Shortly after Yorda awakens from her petrified state, covered in the same magic as her mother. Yorda is now the queen of the castle in the mist. Fortunately, Yorda seems to have retained her memories, whether due to an incomplete number of sacrifices, the queen being incorrect, or Yorda's strong will has retained them is unknown. The castle begins to crumble, likely by Yorda's will, as she truly knows now that leaving its walls is impossible. She takes the unconscious Iko, whose horns are now shattered, to the docks he arrived on. She softly tells her friend goodbye, as she remains, while the castle collapses around her. There's a post-credit sequence where Iko awakens on a beach. Wandering the beach, he notices someone else is washed ashore. Approaching the figure, he sees it is none other than Yorda, who awakens and says in her tongue, Yes? If you are playing New Game Plus, you can bring a watermelon with you to Yorda, in which a cute scene will play of the two enjoying the summer fruit. This is just a silly nod, as enjoying watermelon at the beach is a pastime Japanese people love. The nature of this post-credit sequence has been called into question. 
Some fans have theorized it is the afterlife, and others view the scene as more literal, and that both made it out of the castle. Ueda is of the opinion. So Iko doesn't die, but he dreams he sees Yorda when he wakes up. Nice. Tragically for Yorda, as far as we know, doesn't get to live the life she wanted beyond the mist. If that disappoints you, be happy to know Ueda considers his take as an interpretation of that sequence. He also has drawn this art piece that suggests it's after the game as Iko appears older, nearly as tall as Yorda now, and he's missing his horns. To tie this back to Shadow of the Colossus quickly, we do know that the beach used in this scene is recreated in Ueda's second title. The ending to Shadow of the Colossus ties the two games together, so many fans of Ueda's works theorize that Iko washes up on the Forbidden Lands. And this could be a valid interpretation, but as Ueda considers Iko to merely be dreaming, it's quite likely that isn't the case. And I'll be honest, I think this is just the reusing of assets, something that's quite common in game development. I personally don't think that these two beaches are meant to be the same, but if Ueda decides to make it so, or if you interpret it that way, it's fair, it's a valid interpretation. I'm just stating my opinion. And so that's my look at the cut content and story analysis for Eco. I know, it's short, but the game we're talking about here is short. Jin Design has been posting a lot of concept art and storyboards on their Twitter and Instagram pages in honor of Eco's 20th anniversary. I think they've just about wrapped up on that. They've been doing it for a couple months now. But one piece that I love is this concept art for the queen on the left and Yorda on the right. I love the more modern look Yorda has, and the queen is so strikingly different. She's covered in markings that aren't too dissimilar to the ones we can see on Yorda's prototype in some early footage of Eco. It seems like this, these markings were also something that was recycled in The Last Guardian for the boy as well. You should also follow Gen Design social media pages as they have been teasing that there is an announcement coming this year. We all know he's working on his fourth game, so that's something to look forward to. I've also opened up a Discord and you can join it by following the link in the description below. Just, just click on it there. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. So the next video I am going to be working on extensively is Colossal Misunderstandings Part 2. That might take a little while because there's a lot I want to say, but I can't wait to get it out there though because I've been stewing on it for so long. Anyway, thanks for watching. You've been a doll. <laughs>